books to the standard. Uh, and, but you'd be surprised how many schools you can walk into and see teachers attempting to literally teach the standards and, and kind of makes me a little bit crazy. Um, but again, Common Core State Standards do not tell us what to teach, what kids should, should read. Um, so that's just an important um, distinction to make. Uh, wherever I go talking about reading, this is a point that I always make, um, that reading is not a skill that you teach, it's a condition that you create. And that's what I'd like to sort of unpack a little bit. Um, those, how many of you here are, just a quick show of hands, are early elementary school, say K-1-2? Okay, so about, about half. So this may be quite familiar to you. Um, but what, you know, I, I just want to, this is what I point out about the nature of reading when I give talks like this. Um, we tend to think of reading as a skill, uh, you know, like riding a bike. Once you learn how to ride a bike, you can ride any bike. Your skill of, of riding a bike transfers from one bike to the next. And most literate adults, if you ask them, I think, think of reading this way. That once you learn how to read, then you can read anything. It doesn't matter whether it's a sports page, a book, um, you know, encyclopedia entry. Uh, I don't think this is true. In fact, I, can, I, would, I would challenge you um, to demonstrate this to yourself, that your ability to read with comprehension does not transfer. Uh, if you are not a lawyer, and I'm guessing there's not a lot of lawyers in the room, um, go home tonight and find the, the, the warranty to your refrigerator, you know, and try reading it. And you will, you will see what your fourth graders do, you know, who are, who are behind. You, your, your rate of reading slows down, you use your fingers, you may even fi find your lips start moving when you're reading. It's, it's not that you've become a bad reader, you're reading out of your depth. Um, if you're not an IT person, for example, then, then take a look at the instructions for, for loading an operating system on your computer. And, and you'll, you'll feel the same thing. You didn't become a bad reader, you're just reading about something that you don't, don't know about. Um, so your reading ability does not necessarily transfer from one domain to the next. There's, the point I like to make is that there's no such thing as an all-purpose reading comprehension set of skills. It's domain specific. If you do the core knowledge work, then you probably know some of this. Um, okay, but let me do a little demonstration. <clears throat> because I am aware that decoding is a skill, okay? Absolutely a transferable skill, and here's my proof. Somebody do me the kindness of reading this word. Turbot. Anybody disagree that this word is pronounced tribbit? No disagreement. Um, add an E at the end and now it's pronounced? Okay, now, now, now think about this, okay? This word does not exist, I made it up. But we all agree um, on the pronunciation of nonsense words. Why? Because decoding is a skill, it's a transferable skill. You can even apply it to, to, to made up words. Um, so there's a code that you can learn, practice, and master. That's phonics, obviously, and, but that's not reading. Okay, that's, that's decoding. Uh, what people outside of education think of reading is reading comprehension. Um, and reading comprehension, the ability to make meaning from words, uh, that is not a skill. Um, but I find we generally try to teach it like one. And this is what made me a bit of a reading zealot in my elementary school. Um, I'm not sure how you were trained to teach comprehension to, to struggling readers. But for us, it was all skills and strategies. You know, it was Reader's Workshop, for example, where you would teach the mini lesson of the skill, and then 24 kids would go off and practice it on 24 books. Um, and then we wonder why they didn't do that well on their tests, uh, because we were not attending to, 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 to background knowledge. Now, maybe this does not occur as often in this school, which I gather is a, a sl slightly better um, socioeconomic status than the schools that I've worked in. Um, but what we see all the time in low-income schools, I still work in a school in Harlem, New York, uh, is this phenomenon of, I read it, but I didn't get it? You know, where students can, can read, they can decode, but when you ask them what you think are fairly basic comprehension questions, they, they don't get it. And they're, they're not lying to us, they really don't get it. Um, and the reason for that is reading comprehension is what a cognitive scientist like Dan Willingham, for example, might call domain specific. Uh, that you need to know a little bit about a subject and sometimes a lot about a subject in order to, to, to make sense of that. Um, one of the examples I like to give is if you're a baseball fan, uh, who here is a baseball fan? Okay, ma'am, if I say to you, um, I want to come up with a West Coast example, um, Troy Tulowitzki hit into a 6-4-3 double play to end the game. Um, who won the game? No idea, okay. <laughs> who does know? Well, who knows who didn't win the game? The Rockies didn't win the game, right. Um, Okay, good job. Who can tell me what Tulowitzki did when he came up to bat? 
He didn't do a double play. Do you even know who he hit the ball to? The shortstop. Some of you who are not baseball fans are going, what in God's name are they talking about? Right? Because this is like a code. Now, I mean, this is an unfair example because it really is a code. Um, but again, that kind of shows the, the, the hidden value of, of uh, shared information. You know, you and I know something about baseball that allows us to communicate in a way that is a, a bit inscrutable to other people. Um, and if you don't know baseball, it's not that you, you, you know, you're, you've, you've gotten dumber. It's just you don't have that, that background knowledge about baseball that allows you to, to know that the Rockies lost, Chulowitzki hit the ball to shortstop, it was the ninth inning, there was one out. All that information is embedded in that simple sentence, Chulowitzki hit a 6-4-3 double play to, <clears throat> to end the game. Um, okay, so why is this so hard to address? Um, reading comprehension is not a skill. This is kind of the way I was taught to teach reading, which is, is the, the skills and strategies approach. Now maybe this is in this school, maybe it's not. But if you go to any school where struggling readers are, are learning to read, you will almost invariably see, you know, and invariably in child-friendly language and teacher posters all over the walls, things like this. Uh, good readers ask questions. Good readers create pictures in their mind. Good readers make connections when they read. Um, the theory is if you teach kids the habits of good readers, what good readers do, and then encourage them to emulate that, to practice it on their own, then they too will become uh, a good reader. Um, there's a problem with this, I, and a little bit arch here, but I call this cargo cult reading. Um, and what I mean by that, that that reference went over your head. There was a physicist uh, by the name of Richard Feynman who wrote some years ago about cargo cults in the South Pacific. If you've never heard of cargo cults, here's what it was. Um, during World War II, uh, various islands in the South Pacific uh, were, were the scenes of battles. And, and the Army and the Navy, they would come in, they would build runways. Um, they would, you know, have uh, guys in, in, in uniform and antenna uh, guiding planes into land. The planes would, would disgorge all this great stuff. And then the war ended, and the, the, the primitive people of these islands wanted this stuff to come back. So what did they do? Well, they built signal fires, just like they saw the soldiers do. They built um, towers. They emulated the behaviors that they saw bring the planes. If you think about it, that's exactly what we do with reading. We're not teaching them to do anything other than imitate the behaviors of good readers. Um, but it doesn't work. Now this sounds absurd, right? You would never think, well, of course that's not going to work. Um, but that is kind of the way we teach reading. Um, but there's something missing in the same way that uh, these cargo cults in the South Pacific were missing some essential knowledge like how to make a plane. Um, you know, our kids who struggle to read are sometimes missing essential knowledge that they need to comprehend. So it just won't do to have them practice what competent readers do and try to imitate it themselves because they lack something essential. <clears throat>